Good morning, everyone. We welcome you all as we join together in this morning's worship. We invite you to stand, if you are able, those who are here in the sanctuary, those who are in the educational building, and those who are joining us virtually, as we now share in the call to worship, which will be read responsibly. We gather to share in our love of God. And let us share your good news. We gather to share our witness to God's goodness. Lord, let our lives bear witness through service to your people. We gather to praise God, whose love is eternal. Lord, Lord open, open our, our hearts, hearts today to sing your praises. Amen. Amen. We now continue with our praise choruses, which will be led by our praise team. We will sing, You Are My King, and I will rejoice with you and be glad. As we continue in the season of Lent, we rejoice in our Savior the journey to the cross that he made for us. His death, burial, and resurrection gives us reason to rejoice. And as we gather in his presence, we sing together, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Amazing love displayed by our God and our King. Amen. Amen. Amen.
what amazing love God has shed abroad in our hearts and we can honor him this morning we sing together real real Christ so real to me a risen Savior he is and he is real in our hearts and lives standing as we sing our gathering hymn, I love to hear the story which angel voices tell.
be seated. We'll now sing our prayer chorus, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, which will be followed by the prayer of adoration and confession. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you today and ask that you would bless our time spent with you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you. Dear Jesus, our God, you are our Savior. You are our protector. You suffered on the cross for us. And we will give you all the honor. We'll give you all the praise. We will give you all the adoration every day of our lives. We honor you, O God, with our words, our thoughts, and our prayers. We exalt you, O God. We praise your name. Great are you, Lord, and most worthy of our praise. Heavenly Father, your name is awesome. You are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. We thank you, Lord, that we can draw near to you in worship at any time, my God. You will never forsake us. But God, we must confess that there are times when we are quick to judge others. Oh yes, Lord. There are times when the distractions of this world and temptations let us not focus on you. Oh God, there are times when life gets so difficult. We are tempted, oh God, to abandon all our faith and all our hope in you. Our Savior. There are times, oh God, when we get angry. There are times, oh God, when we get bitter. And there are times, oh God, we cannot feel the peace that you have for us, my God. And that you intend for our lives because there's just so much hostility in the world. But, oh Lord, let us be mindful that forgiveness is your commandment. Let us turn away, oh God, from all the hurt and pain that we are suffering. And let us claim, oh God, the spiritual abundance that you offer to us so freely, your salvation, my God. Let us draw strength from you, O oh Lord. Let us trust you, Father, in the good times and in the bad times. Let us never give up hope, my God, even when our soul is troubled. 
Let us yield not to temptation, O God, for yielding is sin. So we, God, today we ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you will renew a spirit of holiness within us. Let your priorities be our priorities, O God. Let your will be done. Thine will be done. Let us live, O God, according to your commandments, so that through you, my God, others may come to know your perfect love. So, God, we ask that you will give us the wisdom, oh yes, Lord, the wisdom to seek your patience. May we wait upon you, my God. May we have the insight to hear from you, O Lord. And may we have the courage to obey you this day and forever. So God, we ask that you will receive the honor that we have for you. You will receive the praise and you will receive the adoration. We love you, Lord. These things we ask in our Savior's name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Father who art in heaven, holy, holy, holy be thy name. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth, as it is in heaven, on earth. Our kingdom come on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day. in heaven, holy be thy name, thy kingdom come on earth, thy will be done on earth, thy kingdom come on earth, as it is in heaven, do not lead us into responsive reading is Psalm 107 verses 1 to 3 and verses 17 to 22. Please stand if you are able. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble. And gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. 
and, and let, let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy from the north and from the south. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Warm welcome again, brothers and sisters, for joining us today in worship at the Barbican Baptist Church. Those in the chapel, those in the educational building, and those who are sharing virtually on the different platforms. We are happy to see you. And for those of us who are here, please just turn to your neighbor and just give them a warm greeting, a shake hand. How are you doing? What's happening? Say hello. Yes. This is what we're all about, gathering, fellowship. And just say, bless you, blessings, yes. Wonderful. It's just so wonderful to see you all, happy faces. The church theme for the year is keeping faith with the word in an ever-changing world, pursuing integrity. And the theme for the month is integrity, integrity in worship. And so, without further ado, I now invite our church sister, our secretary, Sister Jennifer Griffith, who will now extend further welcome and give the notice. Sister Griffith. Thank you. Sister Paulette. Good morning, church. I certainly join our leader this morning in extending a very warm welcome to everyone here with us, those who are present and those who are, are online. And um, we extend this welcome on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Trevor Edwards, who, as you know, this morning would be offering his services elsewhere. So we pray for God's blessing on him as he deliver at um, a congregation at Golden Spring. Brothers and sisters, friends, this morning our speaker is Deacon Glendon Brown, and of course Deacon Brown is no stranger to us, right? He's here very often, and we're always very happy to see him. And um, Deacon, this morning, as usual, we thank you for agreeing to be with us this morning, and uh, we know we'll be blessed by what you have to share with us today. So welcome to Barbican Baptist Church. I want to also extend welcome to two fine young men who I saw coming in this morning. And I'm sure we all heard it spirited, extra spiritedness in the drums this morning, right? And so let us welcome Jesse and James Carr from Mona Baptist. From Mona Baptist, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> And I could see even, even Brother Francois enjoying the drums this morning. You know, <laughs> good to have you. And so again, we extend welcome to those who have joined us virtually. And um, we pray that you'll be blessed today by the worship experience. And if there, is there anyone here for the first time? Worship at Barbican Baptist for the very first time and is here in a congregation? No one? Okay, if this is your first time and you have joined us virtually, we invite you to just share in the chat that this is your first time with us so we can acknowledge your presence. Now for your notices. Please be reminded that the Heart Foundation of Jamaica will be conducting a training session this afternoon. That's this, eve, this afternoon starting at 5 p.m. here at Barbican Baptist Church. And um, we invite you, as we've been doing, to come out and participate in this could be life-saving, could be life-changing skill that can be acquired. Because of course, we know that it's always good to have, to be able to respond if somebody's having a heart attack, right? Or another challenge. So this evening is a chance for you to just learn a little bit more. So please come out for a training session. It is being put on by the Heart Foundation of Jamaica in collaboration with our Sunday School. 
and uh, we're asked to wear comfortable clothing. Because, of course, we have to demonstrate these things, right? We have to learn through practice. So please come dressed comfortably for a training session at 5 o'clock this afternoon. The Kingston and St. Andrew Baptist Association, Baptist Youth Arm of the Association, will be hosting a series of financial fitness sessions. Financial fitness sessions. This will be in the month of March and April, and um, Casa Bile sees it necessary to educate our youth and young adults about making wise financial decisions that will impact the course of their lives. Us older folks need to learn that too also, so you can also join. So on March 16th, they'll be, they'll be hosting a session on investments here at Barbican. It starts from 5 p.m. to go on to 7 p.m. And um, all are invited to attend uh, financial fitness sessions. And the Kingston and St. Andrew Association um, churches will be hosting Holy Week services from Sunday, March 24th to Thursday, March 28th. And it will be at Bethel Baptist each evening starting at 6.30 p.m. at Bethel Baptist. And churches participating on Thursday will be Barbican, Mona, and Jonestown Baptist churches. But you're invited to go every, every evening, right? But on Thursday, it will be our special focus where we are actively involved in, um, in the session. Just to remind you, it's, it's um, Holy Week services from Sunday, March 24th, to Thursday, March 28th. And of course, Thursday is Holy Thursday, next day will be Good Friday. Please join us for midday meditation on Tuesdays, 11.45 to 12.45. And um, this, you can join here in the sanctuary, or you can join virtually on the Zoom platform. And you can always get the, um, the Zoom link from the office. Bible study is on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. And again, this is in a hybrid form. That is, you can join online, the Zoom platform, or you can be here in person at the sanctuary. And um, the, the, the topic continues in Bible study, emotionally healthy spirituality. Emotionally healthy spirituality. And uh, we invite you to join Bible study. Please be reminded that offerings for Sunday school can be given here at church or online. Those who are in family worship or family Bible hour this morning would have already done your Sunday school collection. But um, those who were not in Sunday school, then you had the opportunity again while we're collecting the offering. And if you are, if you have joined us virtually or if you are here, you still can use the option of making your, your Sunday school contribution online. And, and um, usually it's, 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 um, in, it's in the bulletin and also projected um, on the homepage of the church. You can find the account number for the church. We continue to collect non perishable food items for the caring ministry of this church. And so we thank those who continue to give and we invite others uh, to join. We are grateful for every contribution that is made by anyone to the caring ministry of this church. We invite you to pay attention to the bulletin. In the order of service, the bulletin section, we, we again list the main activities coming up so you can have a reminder during the week. And um, as I said before, you're invited to join where possible. And we continue to remind you to protect yourselves, take adequate precaution from the dengue fever, mosquito bites, and also to remind that COVID is also still around. You know, I heard the minister, the minister, of, of, the minister of Health the other day was reminding persons that COVID is still around. So I'm just echoing that to you again this morning to take your precaution. If you're in a crowded space or you're not so well, if you're a little flu or so on, you know, just take your precautions and um, take care of yourselves and your neighbors. If you have been blessed today, if you require for further ministry, if you need prayers, if you need to make a decision for Christ, you may speak with our deacon on duty, Deacon Michelle Blackfellow, she's right here behind me, or you can speak to her sister, Deslin Clark, 
you know, they're both deacons. You know, I say sisters, but Deacon Desden Clark and Deacon Michelle <laughs> Blackello and Deacon Desden is raising her hand as usual. Um, so you can reach out to her if you need to speak with someone today. You can also indicate in the chat or you can call the office at 876-823-7074. Um, you can also send a WhatsApp to that same number, 823-7074, and you will certainly get to respond. Brothers and sisters, friends, this is a beautiful, beautiful Sunday, and um, we can just share, just join in just celebrating the day and giving thanks to God for life, and we pray that you'll have a wonderful week. God bless you. We thank you, Sister Jennifer, and rightly so, Deacon. Deacon Jennifer, thank you. We will now continue our worship service through Congregational Fellowship, and we will now have our offertor commitment and the blessing of the offering. I invite you to stand, and the blessing will be done by our deacon, Michelle Blackello. We, we stand, stand and, and declare, declare that, that we are all cheerful givers. givers. We, we commit, commit these tithes and our offerings to God as our, as our first fruits, fruits our expressions of gratitude for God's, God's goodness. goodness. We, we give because God so loved us that, that he first, first gave by sending his only son to die for our sins. We, we gladly proclaim that it is more blessed to give than to receive. We are, we are blessed, blessed as individuals and as a church, as a church family. family. We, will we will continue, continue to, give to give cheerfully to the building up of the kingdom of God and the work of his church because we know that this is what God desires of his faithful followers. Father in heaven, we thank you as you are the giver of every good gift. Your word reminds us, Lord, that every good gift is from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Lord, as we give back a portion of what you've blessed us with, we pray, Lord, that it will be used to bless others, to expand the kingdom, and to lift your name on high. Be glorified, Lord, in all that we give, whether monetary or time or resources. For we ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise team will now carry us with to have the... Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship.
we will now have the Sunday School Minute, which will not be projected, but will be live by our sister, Sharon. Good morning, church. It's, uh, permit me first to underscore the welcome to our preacher, one of my former Sunday school teachers who made me know and made me enjoy Sunday school. And in like manner, I need to welcome his wife, Sister Joy Simons Brown, who was my choir teacher when I thought I could sing. <laughs> And my takeaway from her always when we used to make mistakes was the disgrace is not so much to fall, but to lie there. And I think that's a good message for us all to remember. The disgrace is not so much to fall, but to lie there. And in like manner, in Sunday school right now, in the adult classes, we are doing the book of James. You can't do James too often. It's about maturing in the faith. Today, we were looking at faith. And a couple of takeaways for us were that, of course, faith without works is dead. It's James 2 we were looking at. Faith is what, quoting uh, another Bible teacher, faith is what you believe. It proves itself by how you behave. And works are not necessary to be saved. We know that we are saved by grace through faith. However, works are evidence that you are saved. And remember, even the demons believe there is a God. So we're not saying nothing when we say we believe there's a God. We need to have a saving faith, and then it's manifested by good works. So God gives us the motive, the right motive to do the good works, the motivation to do the good works, and the means for doing the good works, so that our attitudes and our aims can be appropriate. And so, therefore, this evening we have an opportunity to do good works. This afternoon at 5 o'clock, we're inviting everybody to come out and learn how to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Learn some f first aid. And when anybody asks you how you know it, you say you learn it at church, okay? And in like manner, we also invite you on the fifth Sunday to come and understand more about the disabled, the disability of visual impairment. That will be at eight o'clock for Open Sunday School on the fifth Sunday, which is Easter Sunday. And so we will understand that more. And again, we can say we learned it at church. So it's still cool to go to Sunday school. God bless you. And I will just say again, it is still cool to go to Sunday school. Thank you, Sister Sharon. We will now have the prayer for the children. So we're asking all the little ones, little ones and young ones and big ones, just to come to the front so that we can pray for you as they come. <clears throat> and also those who are in, at home, we just ask that the older ones will just reach out a hand to the young ones as we pray for them. And those of us who are here in the sanctuary, we just ask that you will just reach out your hand as we pray for our little ones. <clears throat> Let us close our eyes, clasp your hands. Our Heavenly Father, we just wanna thank you, O oh God, for these young children who are here today. We thank you, O oh God, that they came out to church and to Sunday school this morning, my God, because they could have stayed home. But, O oh Lord, we thank you that they are here today. They are here learning about your word. They are here learning about your love. They are here learning about, my God, how good it is to love you and to worship you so that they can go out and offer the same encouraging words, my God, to those their friends and their little ones that they come in contact with at school and at play. So we thank you for them, my God. We thank you that you are here. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, suffer the little children to come unto me. So we thank you for them, my God. We ask that they will be obedient. 
we ask that they will listen my god we pray for them when they're in the schools we pray for them when they're at home my god oh lord you see the violence that is being perpetrated out there you know and see what is happening my god you see the hostility that is being done against our children but we ask oh god that you will just protect them oh lord we ask that you will just surround them with your protection dear lord at all times when they're at school when they're at home when they're walking when they're at play we thank you for them my god because they are precious you gave them to us my god and so we ask that you will just continue to be with them, that they will grow, my God, in your favor. They will grow knowing what it is like, my God, to love you and to worship you at all times. So we thank you for them, my God. We thank you for all the children that you have given to us. We ask that you will continue to bless them, oh God, in a very special way. We pray that we will continue to love them just as how you love them. Be with them, guide them, and protect them this day. These things we ask of you, O oh God, in your Savior's name, in our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can now go to Junior Church. Bye bye. <laughs> We'll now continue through with worship through congregational fellowship and we'll now have the prayer of intercession and thanksgiving and that will be done by Deacon James Scarlett. Let us pray. Oh God and our Father, we come again, Lord. We want to thank you for allowing us to be here. We pray, oh God, at this time for the church is universal, and in particular, Barbican Baptist. Help us, Lord, to realize that we are the light of the world. And as believers, we can do so much to let our light shine so that others will come to know you as Lord and Savior. We prayed, Lord, at this time for our leader, Sister Paulette, and we prayed for our brother Deacon Glendon, and indeed his dear wife, Sister Joy, who have come to share with us what the Lord, what you have laid on their heart and his heart. We pray, Lord, that we will receive it with joy and gladness and live by it. Lord, we pray that this time for our leaders, both religious leaders and political leaders in government, in business, and in all part of the society. We ask, oh God, that they will listen to you, to your voice, through the guidance of your Holy Spirit, so that whatever they do, whatever we do, will be done to your honor and your glory. We pray especially, Lord, for our business people who continue to provide jobs. And we ask, Lord, that they will do it willingly so that those who seek work will benefit. And we pray for those who work, those who get the work, will do it joyfully knowing that they have a service to render and they're doing it unto you, especially those of us who are Christians. Lord, we pray for our political leaders and especially those new councillors who have just been elected and re-elected. We ask, oh God, that you will help them to realize why they are there 
and what they promised to do. We know, Lord, that they will not be able to carry out all the promises that they have made. But, Lord, we commit them to you as they continue to search themselves and to turn the searchlight in to look into themselves. What they had promised during their campaign, they will try their endeavor best to fulfill some, if not all. Lord, the world is in turmoil. And at this time, oh God, I want to ask you, please, to be with the people in Haiti, in Sudan, in Nigeria, in Israel, and Gaza. Lord, we ask you to help those leaders to realize that you are still alive and well and want to talk to us and want to lead us. Help us, Lord, and as a church, to re as best as is humanly possible, to remind these leaders as we get the chance so to do, that they need to lead aright and to listen to you because you are still talking. Lord, we pray for those among us who are not well. Here at Barbican and elsewhere, we know there are people, even in the congregation, Lord, who come with various challenges. We commit them to you, Lord, and we ask that even now, and when we leave, they will not leave the same in which they came. We pray for those of our members who want to be here and not here, both here in Jamaica and overseas, online, and wherever they are. We commit them to you, O God. And we ask, Lord, that they will continue to trust in you in spite of their challenges especially those, Lord, who are going through pains. Sometimes we, we can understand it's hard to bear. But, Lord, help them to realize that you never leave them nor forsake them. And indeed, all of us understand that. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our musicians, especially our two visitors, and indeed our own brother, Francois. We commit them to you. We thank you, Lord that they gave us music so that we can worship, sing to your glory, and enjoy our worship. Again, we commit ourselves to you, O God. I ask you please to lead and to direct. Help us, Lord, as we go through this season of length, we will understand that it is extra, God, the devil is coming at us double, just like what he did with Jesus. But help us, Lord, especially as believers, that we can be able to say, get thee hence behind me, Satan. So, Lord, we leave ourselves to you now and ask that the rest of the service will be done to your honor, to your glory, and for our spiritual blessing. For we ask all these in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed three in one. Amen and amen. We continue in worship through proclamation and response, and we now have the scripture reading, the written word of God, which is recorded in Jeremiah 18, verses 1 to 11. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 to 11. At the potter's house. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, 
Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster that I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. The word of the Lord. Our speaker for this morning is Deacon Glendon Brown. Deacon Glendon Brown is a deacon at Bethel Baptist Church. And as was said before, he's no stranger. He's been here many times and we have received the word from him. And so we ask the Lord to continue to bless him and his family, his wife who is here with us. And we know that whatever the Lord has laid on his heart to deliver to us, we will be richly blessed and we will receive his word with joy. We will now sing the hymn of preparation. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul. Please stand if you are able. Strength is fading. The end. 
draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise on ending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. So bless the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here once again. I'm no longer a stranger. I'm a member of the household of faith of Barakan. And Joy and I are glad to be here to share with you this morning. I hope that the new year has gone off well with you, that the plans that you have made have been attended to, and that you are working on your health and are looking forward to a great year. Today, I want to share a word with you. By the way, I notice it's changed the service time. So next time I come, I'll have a longer sheet. Of <laughs> you can't say that you're going, you need to go to Sunday school. You have been before. There is a great difficulty in preaching from any section of the Bible which is well known. And the potter's story is one which is well known, perhaps one of the best known passages in the Bible. If you don't know it word for word, you know the essence of the story. And it's worse when this passage is made to song the potter's hand, or to chorus, mold me and make me, and so on. So the moment you hear the passage, there's a tendency for us to turn off. What else can I learn from this? I've been reading or hearing about this passage from I was a youth. But this is one of the challenges that we face because it's the same scripture we have been reading from time to time. And you and I know that sometimes 
you go to a portion of scripture, that new light comes to you without you working or waiting for it to happen. It, just, it happens. Somebody says something and you see a passage in a new light. So then I'm asking those of us who are familiar with this passage, not to turn me out, turn me off. Not to tune out mentally. Because there's a, I was a youngster at, at, at one time. I know what it is to look attentive. But your mind is far away. And especially if you left something undone elsewhere. I hear that already, man. I'm focusing on what needs to be done. So you are here, but your mind is on the other side of town. The potter's house is perhaps one of the establishments that is in all Jewish communities. Arabs, what have you. Clay pots. They are famous for clay pots. Any of us know how I've been to a potter's, seen a potter's wheel? Any of us know how the clay pots are made? Some of us, some of us bowing our heads, we, 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 we know. The potter makes the vessel with his hands as he uses his feet to turn, cause the thing to tr turn. He scrapes off excess. He builds up weak spots and makes a perfect utensil. When the story is told, it seems to me that Jeremiah was not going to the potter's house for the first time. When you read all of Jeremiah, that's a conclusion that I have, I, have, I have come to. That he has been to the potter's house before. But this occasion, something special happens. Jeremiah makes an observation that he never thought of before. Reminding us what this passage may mean for us. Maybe repetitive, repetitive. What is important for us to sometimes re-emphasize and revisit old thoughts because they are sometimes new thoughts for the present circumstance in which we find ourselves. To be reminded for some of us is painful. It tickles the conscience. It prompts a response which we are not always prepared to give. So we are here and we are being reminded. Our conscience is stirred, but it evokes unease because we are not willing to make the appropriate response. We talk about integrity in worship. Integrity in worship means that if you feel away and you need to respond, you respond. Integrity is when you dismiss what is true about you. What is true about you. What's the background to this Jeremiah story? Jeremiah was a faithful prophet. But he's a prophet who nobody listened to. Can you imagine yourself not being listened to for generations, for years. Jeremiah preaches to these people and nobody is listening to him. It is a frustrating business. He was poor. He was imprisoned. He was thrown into a cistern. He was exported to Egypt. He was rejected by his neighbors and his family. Ignored by the king. He was a lonely and frustrated prophet. Imagine yourself being in Jeremiah's shoes. Some people tell me that is not strange. Teachers may tell you that it's not unusual for them to feel lonely. You are talking about a child who is having some issues and nobody will listen to you. You're talking about your children who won't listen to you. It can be painful. And Jeremiah, called by God 
to preach to a nation which was going off key. Moving further and further away from God. And they weren't listening. They were laughing at him. Planning to kill him. Jeremiah was frustrated. Jeremiah, it is said, had nervous breakdown. My brothers and sisters, and sisters. Jeremiah went to visit the potter. And what he saw opened up a new vision of how God works with people. In his frustration, God provided for him a solution, a direction, which he understood and he followed. When we are in trouble, sometimes, it is difficult, extremely difficult, to look at new ways of doing the same thing. We keep on doing the same thing all the while, and the results remain the same. We see the same thing, but we never see anything different in the same thing. Sometimes, there's a message there for us. And I want for us to learn something about Jeremiah as this frustrated prophet. Nobody listening to him. Wanting to kill him. Sending him to exile. Exporting him. But yet, Jeremiah got a vision of what God was doing and how God worked. Inspiring him to continue what he was doing. Have you ever reached that place in your life? When you have done all you can and nothing seems to be working, what do you do? What do you do? How can you be inspired, renewed, to preach to people who won't listen to you? How do you find the strength to deal with people who won't who have any time for you, dismissive of you? How do you help someone who declares no interest in what you are saying, embarrasses you, treats you like a dog? How are you inspired to go on? It's one of the challenges we face in this modern world in which we live. I want to share three thoughts with you. They are short, but I want you to make note of them and to, con to, to think about them for yourself, to reflect on them. The question is, how can you be inspired and receive new understanding from the ordinary? What does this story tell you? It tells me three things. One, God reveals himself through the ordinary and familiar activities we pursue daily. God reveals himself through the ordinary and familiar activities we do each day. You often hear, hear, hear the saying, we can't see the forest but for the trees. There's a tendency for us to overlook and underestimate things that God is doing because we are so taken up in the big picture of problems. Jeremiah observes the potter making utensils. Perhaps he was making a cup or a saucer or a jar. And he has seen it before. But suddenly, a light pops in his head. This is how God is working in the world. God reveals himself through the ordinary and the familiar activities we pursue daily. Many of us go through life without observing and knowing anything about the little things of life. We are always looking at the big picture. What is the big picture? But the big picture is made up of the little picture. The big picture is a result of the little things that we do. And too often, we overlook the kindness, the care, the hello, the thank you, the gratitude that people are expressing 
The little things make big things better. If the little things is bad, how can the big picture be good? How can the big picture be good and the little things are bad? Jeremiah had a revelation in looking at what the potter was doing with the clay. We often observe, but we don't see. We see, but we do not understand. All, what would you, if you were Jeremiah's position and you went into Potter's workshop and saw him making cups and saucers and so on, what would you think? Well, I declare that him getting not good enough. What do you think? The machine I'm using is old. Too much labor. The water I'm using is too salty. I'm not pumping the machine fast enough. We see all kinds of problems, but we don't see the little picture. What is the little picture? Jeremiah saw a new meaning in the potter's activity. Sometimes we are blinded by our desire so we can't see God's activity. We are blinded by what we want to accomplish. We don't see what God is doing. We want God to speak to us in, in visions. Why well, I see the vision of the angel at the foot of my bed. We want God to speak for us, the voice coming out of the blue. We want God to do the dramatic when God is doing the little things. It was the prophet Elisha who was waiting to hear from God. Hurricane, storm, thunder. God was not there. God was in the silent, the calm of the evening. God don't have to blow a trumpet to be seen. Too many of us want loud things to happen. God come down and kill the people, drop brimstone and fire on them. God works in different ways, the little ways. He reveals himself through the ordinary. One of the things that um, always amazed me, sometimes in talking to persons, in spite of what is happening to them, like for example, Sister Sharon is a doctor. Some people want to be doctor, but at the sight of blood, they faint. Some people insist on doing some things in which they, their, their physi physical makeup, their mental makeup doesn't facilitate them doing it. And roadblocks are coming in your way all the time, and you don't see. Could not be God telling me that this is not for me. Half the church is saying that you are called to be so and so, and you dismiss it because that is not one year agenda. God works in simple ways through the little actions that we take that take place every day. God reveals Himself through the ordinary and the familiar. We need to remember that. And to be more observant of things that happen around us. They tell a story. The little things are important because the little things make the big picture. The second thing that comes to my mind is that God has the capacity and the ability to remake or to remodel broken people into their best selves. God is a master craftsman. God has the capacity, the ability to remake, to remodel broken people into their best selves. God is a master craftsman. Jeremiah observes the potter making the vessel. Something comes up. And the potter, without blinking, changes what he was doing into something else. So the pot, so the clay doesn't become useless, but is transformed into something that is useful. The potter, as God, who created the world, can create new people, new you. If we allow him. 
Jeremiah notes that the potter doesn't throw away any piece of the clay because it is not quite the right texture. It's not the, quite the right piece of clay to use. Too much sand, perhaps. Too much water, perhaps. Whatever it is, the lump of clay, some lumps of clay, will not make a good cup. But it's best used as a saucer. So the potter reshapes and remolds what is in his hand to suit what there is. What does that tell us about God? Failure to meet the standards is often a disaster for some of us. You don't meet the standards, disappear. I have no use for you. You have failed here, you will never succeed elsewhere. There is no chance for salvation for you. So what? You are thrown away. God doesn't make us useless. God is a master craftsman who knows what our best selves ought to be. Come to Jesus, we say. As you are, we say. But we come to Jesus not to remain as we are, but for Jesus to transform us into our better selves. Too many of us come to Jesus telling him what he must do with us. Dictating to God how he must make us, what he must provide for us. No, the master craftsman knows best what model you need to be what you can, are best able to do and will shape you to fit that model. God has the capacity and the ability to remake, remodel broken people into their best selves. God is the master craftsman. He created us. You know, I, I once heard a defense of, it, of God. I don't remember what's the name of the gentleman who said it. But he says, who is God? God is the one who brings matter, time, and space. Matter, time, and space together. Do you know of anyone who, is, who can do that? That is God. And, and because God is, overrules time, matter, and space, we can't discover him. God is not discoverable. God reveals himself. And he reveals himself through the potter. Here I am, shaping, molding you into your best self. Come to Jesus, not as you are. As, come to Jesus as you are, to become who you ought to be. So God reveals himself. God has the capacity and the ability to remodel us. God is a master craftsman. But he noticed something else. God is willing, and pay, God willingly and patiently removes the willing. No rejection. God willingly and patiently removes the willing. No rejection. When the potter finds that there is something, let's say, wrong, with a uh, clay he has in his hands, Without hesitation, he shifts and changes it into something else. He doesn't reject it, throw it away in the dump. God is always reconciling, renewing, remaking. That is the nature and character of God. God made us, and he made us to have a relationship with him. That is why he's always seeking, searching the lost sheep. Searching for the one sheep that has gone astray. God willingly and patiently removes the willing. I say the willing. Not all of us are willing to be remolded and to be remade. When the, the potter starts to remake the vessel, you get the impression from the story that the, there was no resistance from the clay. The clay submitted the skill 
and the ability of the potter. Do we submit ourselves willingly to the skill and the ability of God? You know, Sister Sharon is a doctor. How many times you go to her and tell her what she must do? We tell our doctors what prescription to prepare, what medicine to give us. We are telling the experts how to do their job. We don't trust them to have our best interests at heart. God has our best interests at heart. So when we are faulty and broken, he makes us whole. He doesn't need our advice. Jeremiah sees God as bringing people together, reconciling them to themselves and to him. It requires cooperation with us and God. God doesn't force himself on us. If the lump of clay decide that he didn't want to be a saucer, the potter would put it one side. But because the lump of clay decided to go with the potter, it became something useful. My brothers and sisters, God is acting in simple and everyday ways. We must not lose sight of his molding and reshaping his ability to do that. Simple things in life make the big things. There's something about the, the, the potter. The potter could know that the clay was faulty and still make it into a cup. But what would happen? Somebody would get a cup that wouldn't work. We don't see that as important. His integrity as a good potter, good craftsman, would be at stake. This is how some of us operate. Because people don't know what we're doing. We slip it in. And when the test of time comes, it breaks. The integrity of the potter is at stake. God, God himself doesn't make faulty things deliberately. He makes things whole, purposefully. My brothers and sisters, God willingly and patiently remolds the willing. He does not reject anyone. Anyone who is willing to be remolded he will act upon it. It demands and requires our patience and our willingness. So God reveals himself. God has the capacity. God is willing. All of us are sinners. All of us have pieces of dirt in our clay. It's the thing of life. But I ask the question of us. Who is molding you? Who is remaking you? To whom do you go when things are not kosher? Is it to God? One of the challenges of the modern age in which I live, we live, and I close with this, that we are being remodeled, not by God, but by social media. Wait, wait, want you to listen a bit? Be, be careful. Look, have a look at our society. The influence that social media has on you and I. Reshaping our thinking. Reshaping our th action. Reshaping our morals, our values. Remodeling into what? Look at the little things. Our children are enticed and entrapped. They are rejected and destroyed. The emphasis on being fashionable and socially acceptable. It controls our time, our resources, and our appearance. Everybody now has the answer to long life and eternity. Everybody's a guru. Everybody knows God 
is under your control. God remodels broken human beings. Who is remodeling you? Whoever is remodeling you will make you into the kind of person that they are. In most cases, people remodel you in their own image. Is the image of my neighbor better than the image of God? We must make the choice. What image are you prepared to display in the world in which you live? God is a God of righteousness, a God of justice, a God of truth. That is who God wants to remake us, remodel us into being. Or are we going to accept the model of selfishness, self-interest, injustice, enslavement? Is that what we want? Jeremiah was frustrated. Nobody would listen to him, but God inspired him. That to the end of his days, he preached the truth to those who need to hear it. If we are willing, God will remake us in his image. Amen. thank Deacon Glendon Brown for sharing his three thoughts with us. God remaking us, God remodeling us, God revealing himself to us. Thank you very much, Deacon Brown. We will now respond by singing the hymn of response for a heart to praise my God, a heart from sin set free. I'm going to ask you to stand if you are able and we will now sing together the hymn of response. and the benediction by Deacon Brown. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we live in a world that is broken. Those of us whom you have called, we are sometimes overwhelmed 
by the burden of speaking the truth. Some are in prison. Some are sent in exile. Some are just so frightened, Lord, they close themselves in closets. Like Jeremiah, Lord, they are frustrated, angry. Help us to see as he did that you will reveal yourself in little ways, that you have not abandoned us, but you are with us. Help us to recognize that you have the capacity, the ability to change things. Help us to be willing to submit to your will. It's hard, Lord, because others around us, the newsmakers, those who spread lies deliberately to create conflict, to profit from conflict, to profit from weapons of war, the enslavement of peoples. Lord, deliver us from them. Help us to remember that you created your God no matter what. You are better than, ability more than. You are conqueror. You are the God of the world. So leave us with that assurance as we face this coming week. Help us to help those who need to remodel their lives, to take a cue from you, to learn of you, so that peace may reign in our land, in our world, so that righteousness will be exalted, so that all will become children of yours, no longer strangers, but children of God. So bless us as we leave this place of worship, going into the world to proclaim you are God in word and in deed. And may grace, your grace, your mercy from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon all of us and your people everywhere. Amen.